Well, for 10 straight months, we've been tracking the health of the ag economy through the lens of ag economists. But now the question is, are we in for a hard fall or a soft landing? That's this weekend's Farm Journal report. Grass greening up in pastures, planter prep well underway. Signs of spring are everywhere, but the reality for the farm economy is there could be more red than green this year. I think we continue to see what's a weaker ex, um, expectation as we look ahead. I, I don't want to overstate that weakness, but we, we continue to see our respondents saying a, a somewhat worse off situation as we look ahead. University of Missouri's Scott Brown helps author the Ag Economist's Monthly Monitor, a survey of nearly 70 ag economists from across the U.S. We plant a lot of corn and we get trend yields. I think I know the direction of corn prices and it's even perhaps lower than where the economists have been uh, to date. Economists' views on the net farm income picture didn't really change much since February, hovering around $117 billion. That projection is a sharp drop from the $160 billion USDA forecasted last year and the record at $202 billion in 2022. Farm income does drop very sharply in 2024 and our projections relative to 2023 and especially relative to the 2022 peak, but we're just back down the levels we saw in 2020. It's not all doom and gloom. The monthly monitor continues to show one bright spot in the ag economy. The outlier for me is cattle. I think cattle prices could get even higher. Cow-calf producers are going to be in the driver's seat for the next uh, year and a half, two years. The March Monthly Monitor asked economists what two factors will drive ag's economic health today and in the next 12 months. Economists say declining prices for many commodities with a mixed impact of higher cattle and hog prices, higher production costs, including inputs, interest rates and land rents, as well as concerns about global economic growth and regulatory uncertainty. Yeah, I think so far the effects have been relatively muted, uh, you know, in spite of the, the problems that, that the situation has had in the Red Sea, for example, it has hasn't had a huge impact so far on the cost of moving grain around the world. So yes, it's it's a negative, no question about it, but it's not, it has been as big of a negative thing some people feared it might be so far. What can impact crop prices over the next six months? Well, economists say it's really all about supply. But if we have an average crop in 2024, we'll be looking at lower prices for most of the major commodities as the most likely outcome. So that tends to push down not just farm receipts, but also net farm income this year as, as production costs uh, remain relatively high overall. But on the livestock side, the supply side for cattle is known. We have the fewest cows since 1961. We have tighter and tighter supplies of beef and cattle. And so the supply side of things really sets up for increasing pressure towards higher prices. David Anderson is a livestock economist with Texas A&M. He says the biggest wild card for cattle is demand. Will consumers continue to buy at their current rate that they did last year uh, with higher prices? Because we've got record high retail beef prices, uh, certainly tighter supplies and the demand for those cattle from packing plants that now are having to fight for animals. That's part of boosting prices too as well as that consumer demand. So it's demand at every step of the chain, so to speak. So just how much higher can cattle prices go? This month's monitor jumped another $3 per hundred weight. Even if we started herd expansion this year out of, let's say a calf that was born this spring, she's not going to have her first calf for two years. And it's another 18 months before that animal is at their finished weight and becomes beef. And so that's almost four years if we started aggressively expanding today. Anderson says that means it could be 2028 or even 2029 before we start rapidly expanding beef supplies, a sign that elevated cattle prices could be in for a long ride if demand can hold. As hog producers come off their biggest losses ever in 2023, economists are slightly optimistic for 2024. You look at our forecast for corn prices, uh, back in December, we were suggesting a 2024-25 a 20, price of a little more than 470. We're setting below 450 in the March uh, survey. So cheaper feed costs, I think, help on the productivity side. Even if 2024 is a break-even year for producers, economists warn it won't be enough to help them dig out of the hole that was created last year. No, it's not enough to recover from all of that because those were those were like record large losses. You know, and that's one of the interesting things on the hog side is, you know, why don't we see a lot more cutback in production already? 
because of those losses, and, and we don't really see that. As for spring planting, the March Monthly Monitor found nearly 80% of those surveyed say soybeans pencil better than corn this year. But even with those economics, economists increased their corn acreage projections slightly from last month. We're certainly seeing maybe an early spring that's allowed folks to get uh, more fertilizer on, more anhydrous on than we would have thought earlier. With higher costs and tighter margins for row crops, now the question is if the U.S. ag economy will see a hard fall or a soft landing this year. I'm still in the soft landing side of things, uh, but I, I want folks to do enough risk management to hopefully prevent the hard fall. If things play out the way we, we have them currently projected, it's a relatively soft landing. And in a sense, it's not a continued crash where we, we see a repeat of some of the horrible times we've had sometimes in the past in, in farm finances. But definitely the risks are there. You know, so again, you, I could easily tell you stories that are much more negative uh, than we've got here. And uh, the opposite is also true that we could have a better picture as well. Now, the Food and Policy Research Institute, or FAPRI, also releasing its annual 10-year outlook for the farm economy this week. The baseline not only provides an overview of what major issues could impact ag, but it also serves as a reference point in shaping policy. Westhoff says one key finding is just how important crop insurance could be over the next decade. As he says, it could be a much larger share of the overall farm support picture than the basic commodity programs under current law today. Well, when we come back, a surge in grain exports from Ukraine. Ag Around the World is next.